Tree. We are here back at Soho Film Festival live at the Soho at Sophia Grill in New York City. We here at the premiere of a Lucky Number. I have these two amazing, amazing people next to me. I have one that's an actor. This is Michael Goodman. How you, how you doing? Hi, how that are you? That was an incredible intro. Oh, great, 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 thank you. Thank you. I also have this amazing producer next to me, Michael D. Lynn. How you doing? Doing great, happy to be here. Them two were just arguing back and forth about who moment it is. I think it's both of you guys' moment. It's his moment. I think it's both of you guys' moment. It's everyone's Dip. moment. Thank you, but everyone's it's about you moment. two. You did amazing, amazing job as a Thank bro you. ham in the movie. Thank you. As I called you a bro ham in the movie. You I'm, were like I'm, one of the bro bros. I'm good with bro ham. Bro, you did with bro ham. Yeah. And you were the foe, the fro bro. I was a bro ham and a fro bro. Fro bro. Yeah. <laughs> How about the work with Method Man? Oh, it was great. I mean, Meth is so just available, a good dude, good energy, good fun. And that's what this movie um, brought out of everybody. Just go out there, have a good time. And he did that, and it was, I mean, his performance was incredible working with these guys. This guy, master of all trades, not only did he produce the film, he also was a second camera operator. I mean, he did, I mean, let him list off all the hats he wore in this production. It's pretty incredible. There we go. Now we're going to ask you. Tell us pretty incredible. Michael D. Lynch. Let's, where do we start? Where do we start? I, I was the producer, but I was also the blind producer and the production manager, the second unit DP, and the B camera operator. So those were the little hats that I wore. Bang, 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 bang. I kept this on time, on budget, and I helped us shoot it. And all the cameras were from my company, We Push Trains. Oh, nice. So, oh. But okay. my cameras had the privilege of being on the set of Past the Lights, which he directed. Okay. And that shows because we're all multi-hyphenates here. And that's what's great, though, about working with talented artists, is he's not just an actor, he's a talented director as well. And he also produces, so he's a talented businessman. And I think that's what's very special about our industry, is we're filmmakers. People try to label us, people try to put us in boxes. But at the end of the day, we're filmmakers and we're creating arts. And that's what's special. And uh, we're really happy to have Lucky Number premiering here at Soho and having Real World Radio. But it's also inspiring to hear a tale about him driving across country in a van for Past the Light and then getting a theatrical deal because of the heart they put into a project. And for me, that's what I aspire to that kind of passion. Now, so I gotta give it up to Malcolm Goodwin. He wanna, he wanna give you, humble dude. He wanna give you all of the praise. So you tell us a little bit about this. Well, what he's talking about is, um, I, I directed a film called yeah. Past the Light. It's Where an inspirational family film, and I, I needed uh, an extra hand, extra camera. The first person I called was this man right here. We call him Lynch, you know, by his last name. and. He came through with his equipment and gear, and not only did he shoot the principal photography, he did BTS, he did um, also shot, shot the poster, the photo that ended up being the poster of the film. So he's also multi-talented, but like I say, he's a, that's a, he got a filmmaker, at, he's a real, real deal filmmaker, and those are, the, those are the type of people I like to surround myself around, so it was an honor. It was an honor to have him there. That means he seems like he's a really great friend. Huh? It seems like he's a really great friend. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, he has, yeah, like I, really I, hold, I hold him in high regard. Not only his friendship, but also his talent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's why, you know, when I had the opportunity to direct that film, I was like, you gotta get Michael I need him here. And he answered the call and he showed up big time. And so, but humble guy, as you can see, very, very humble. So I gotta let him know, because he will never look in the mirror and let himself know. And it's, I think it's up, it's, it's up to other filmmakers to, to let each other know, you're, you're killing it. You're doing great work, you know? Um, and congratulations. So I'm giving up to him. This is his night, Michael Kukulo's night, all the other producers, our director, Brendan, they did a great job with sticking with this film and sticking with telling his story so that everybody can see it tonight in its world premiere. And uh, while we're on that subject, you did an amazing job. This film was amazing. I really, really, really did like it. I liked a lot about it. Everything was so much fun. It was so I much, it was I shot funny. the poster for Lucky Number Two. 
That poster is the one I shot. Remember? Because I shot you guys. We almost did that other ending with you guys. Yeah. Okay, so tell us some fun things that happened on set. There was a lot. Was who who forgot lot. their lines? Who was like the one person that's forgetting their lines a lot? No one really forgot their lines. Okay. Forgot their lines. Everybody was. We have that problem on this set. Oh good. Oh nice. No, no. I mean, the actors are. I mean, they're all professional actors. You know. I mean, the thing for us was always um, I just not you know the fact that we're still doing a movie that should have been like a twenty million dollar movie for half a million bucks. So that was our only struggle was. Oh my God, it needs to be a giant party scene, but we got no money. But we need to make it look like these guys have access to all the money. So that was the hardest thing. They brought the goods. You know, we didn't have a problem with actors, you know? I mean, every one of them was SAG. Every one of them was professional. He's on the show iZombie. You know, uh, Tom Belfry's on Banshee. So, I mean, we're working with professional actors. Method Man, we all know who Method Man is. Every one of us, come on, if you're born at a certain age, you saw how high, right? So, like, we all, you know, the actors showed up and did their job. And it was our responsibility as producers and Brendan as the director to finish the film and to get it out there. And that's what we're in the middle of doing right now, is getting the film out there so people can see it and they can experience it. And uh, one thing Method Man always said to us why he took the job was he was happy to not play a thug, he was happy to play a basketball player. Something very different. And something not that was like stereotypical yes. of what he normally gets casted in because in The Wire he played a thug. Right. And here he was like, I'm happy I'm not playing a thug and I can, you know, relate to this celebrity, you know? So I think um, it, was, it was really good to have, you know, Method and Malcolm and Tom and Joey and Natalie and Carme and Milena. We had a really solid cast. We're all the chemistry cast. sounded like it was really, really great. Like the chemistry between everybody. And when I asked a lot of them, I spoke to uh, Milena earlier and I also spoke to Joseph and everybody seemed like they all had so, much, so many great things to say about each other. Like the chemistry was really, really there. So you guys really picked a great cast. You know, cast is 90% of the film process. If you don't cast good people, you can't polish that turd. And I heard that this film was uh, made in um, right before Sandy Storm. We you had to get in and get out? Our last day of filming, we got hit by Hurricane Sandy. And I'll tell you, it was tough because, I mean, back then, you had to have a certain license plate number to get gas. And we had PAs and trucks oh with that ran out of gas being like, we can't return our lights. We can return our dolly. We, we, we can return our trucks. You know, so we had to pay for more parking at the parking places. The rental house, though, Able City and Radiant Images, they were really great about, um, and West Carrier Lighting, they were really great about allowing us to go over and not charge us the extra week. Because I'll be honest, it took about a week after Hurricane Sandy to get power for our phones to charge to get the gas for our trucks to be able to drive and return our lights and return our camera gear. So, uh, you know, my company, we was trained, obviously we didn't charge for the camera time, but we rented a lot of um, tripods and we rented a lot of camera support from Able City and Radiant Images. And we rented all of our lights from West Carrier Lighting. And they didn't charge us for returning the gear a week late because of Hurricane Sandy. And power space, power space is where we got our office space from. So, you know, I don't mean to be dropping all these names, but it takes a lot of companies, and it takes a lot of people for the whole project to come together. At the end of the day, as a producer, we're like a funnel, and everyone else is the water. And we funnel the water into a fine point that becomes the movie. And hopefully it's a movie that people enjoy and then they can um, get a break from their lives and feel like, hey, I gotta see Method Man in something. I gotta, I gotta see Malcolm Goodwin in something. I gotta see Tom Belfry and Natalie. I gotta see these people I've become fans of in a movie with a really fun concept. Because everyone thinks the concept of having your celebrity's phone is a fun concept. Because we all know if someone, 
If someone had access to my phone, it might not be like the movie, but they'll have access to who my contacts are. You know, if they have your phone, they got your contacts. You know, for me, it might mean you might get a good uh, biscuits and gravy sandwich. You know, they, you know my wife gets some good cooking, so you can hit her up and be like, I'm ready for some. Yeah. But that's that's what I love about, about film is I come from a sports background, I'm a hockey player. It's a team sport. And what's great is to collaborate with other really talented individuals. So let me ask you a question. If you had a chance to have a celebrity's number, who would it be? If I had a chance to have a celebrity. Have a celebrity's number, like in a movie, who would it be? I'll take Chris Brown's cell phone number. I have a feeling he gets invited to some things. Okay, okay, okay. You don't like that answer. You know, like, you know, oh, wait, me or you? I say you don't I like the answer. I had to think because I was trying to think about some no. extra and fun and, and fun and new girlfriends and new oh. babies and all oh, that. Oh, I'm not, I'm not down for that drama. No, 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 no. No, I don't want any. Oh, so. yeah. That's a good <laughs> so, point. Exactly. So, so you I'm was like, thinking ahead. I was thinking all the way I was just there. thinking about partying and getting and cracking. You, you were thinking can, about can, all the drama. You can really get into some trouble with having Chris Brown's number and trying to be pretending yeah, Chris Brown. Yeah, that's what that's you that so, I'm like, so, okay. So I may have to take that back. <laughs> you get into some trouble. I, I may you have to have a baby on the way I you don't know to, about. You know, I take Oprah's cell phone number. How about that one? You like that one? I like that. I we like worked that, that out. We did. We worked that out. I, I helped you out? She helped me out. Good, good. I take Oprah's yes. cell phone number. That's a good question. How about you? What celebrity you would want to take his cell phone number? Here's a hard cell phone number. He uh, Chris Brown at first. Channing Tatum. That motherfucker might get some phone calls. Shit. Not that is true. Not that that is true. The kids. Not that is true. I ain't lying. No, that These is true. kids like Channing Tatum. I might lie. That is very true. That is true. You have a point. That is very true. Okay. When Jump Street was a fucking popular movie, am I lying? Well, thank you so much for thank talking you. to me. Congratulations. You as well. Congratulations. Thanks, the movie is great. Uh, can you tell us where we're going to get it? Where can we see this movie? It's going to be on DVD? Anything? Do you know anything? Can you tell us anything? iTunes. Anywhere you can get video on demand. The digital age. We're getting Lucky Numbers. All about the hashtag Lucky Number and the digital age. So look for us online. You know, search hashtag lucky number. Okay, I will do that. And I'm going to make sure I tell all my friends to go search that. Make sure y'all go search all that that he said so you can get this movie and watch it. You got to watch it. It's funny as hell. He's amazing. He's amazing with all of the producing and everything. It was great. So, again, thank you so much. Thank you again for talking thank to you. me. I'm here with these two amazing guys. But I'm out. It's your girl, Tasia Star. <laughs>